Welcome learners to my channel, OK to Learn. So I am Manakshi Dhar, your coach, and I'm bringing a very important topic for all of you today, that is modals. So do you also get confused with the words should, would, and could? Do you also get confused that what is the difference between them? So here we are to learn and understand that how we are going to use them correctly, okay? So let's see how to use should correctly in today's class, in today's session, and then we will practice further. All right. So the first thing that comes in my mind that should is a modal that you all should know. Okay. Great. And this should can be used for when you're talking about yourself. For example, I, I should complete my work. For others, when you're saying she should be on time. Exactly. They. For Others as well, when you are using it for things as well. So self, others and things. So when you use modal, you can use it for all such cases. We'll practice in detail. Let's continue for now. So there are three ways, three usage of should. Let's look at them one by one. First one is advice. So whenever you are giving advice to somebody, you use the word should. For example, you should complete your task before teacher scolds you, right? So there you are giving advice to your younger sibling. It's easy to give advice, but it is difficult to follow. We know that, but for advice, we use the word should, which is a modal. okay? Second comes obligation. When you have any duty, any responsibility, that time also we use the word should. When you are obliged with some responsibility, you need to use the word should. For example, when your mother says that you should complete your homework before you sleep. So, so you have to complete it, right? Okay. So, we understood here that should is used for advice, for obligation and for expectation. So, when you have some expectations from others, you put the word should and you make it clear that it is my expectation. Okay, let's look at some examples just to make the term little clear, just to make it more clear that how can we use the word modal? How can we use the word should, the modal? Okay, so first example which comes here, Jack should do his homework. Okay, so what are we doing right now? We are sharing our expectation from him. What do we expect? We think that Jack should do his homework. Okay, so here... This should is a modal and it is telling that we are putting some expectation from Jack. Okay. It can also be used as an obligation here. It is his duty. So let's say teacher has given him homework and tomorrow teacher is going to check the assignments. Now in this case I can use it as an obligation. Jack should do his homework. Do you agree? Nice. Moving ahead with the next one. Next sentence. You should ask him for help. So basically, I'm giving an advice. I'm not saying that it is your responsibility to ask for help, but I'm just giving an advice that you should ask. Right? Okay. So you should ask him for help. Even it can be used in other ways. So here, should is a modal. Moving on to the next sentence to practice a little more the topic. That is, she should start learning crucial topics. Now here, I'm exactly putting my expectation from her that she should start learning some crucial topics, some important, some, you know, uh, essential topics. That's why I said she should start learning crucial topics. And that is how we practice using the word should, the modal should. Now, we are going to practice using should in some minutes. Okay, so just for all of your reminder, I just want to remind you all that should, modal, be used for three cases. First is advice, second is obligation, and third is expectation. Do remember the usage so that we can further focus on the formation of the sentence when we use modal. Okay, so starting with all the subjects, as I said in the beginning of the class, whether you are talking about self, whether you are talking about others, or about anything, you're going to use for everything should or shouldn't. So no difference is made whether you use we, you use he or they. Okay. 
Let's continue. <clears throat> so should is used for affirmative sentences, positive sentences. And should not is used for negative sentences. Please remember. Okay. Now let's see. So what changes do we make in verb form? We actually do not make much changes in the verb form. Work, go. But when we are talking about past, okay, when we are going to the past, that time we make changes here, okay. So in that case, we are using have and then past form of verb, past participle of verb. Let's look at and let's listen to some examples, okay. For all of you, I'm sharing some examples. Listen to them carefully. I should go home tomorrow, okay. Positive sentence, affirmative and everything is normal. Great. He should not work there or he should not uh, teach English today. Okay, so I'm using affirmative right now and I'm coming with the present. Now let's try to go with the past form. Okay, they should not have worked yesterday. They should not have worked, yet, worked yesterday. Means I'm talking about something which happened in past. And I am regretting right now. So that is the case when we use should not. Don't worry. There, there is already a class on should have, could have and would have. Do watch that session to be more clear about the concept. How to use should have, would have and could have. For now, let's focus on the usage of should. And let's practice it little more. Okay. So this is the way how we have divided the present and future and past. Present and future is little easy, but when we come to past, it becomes little complicated to understand. One major thing that you have to remem remember, when you are using it for past, we are going to put have. No need to make any change because of he or she. So it should not happen that you say that he should not has. No, he should not have. So that will remain same and we will continue. And one more thing that with have we use past form, verbs past form. Let's do some practice with the help of some sentences to understand this past, past part of should in a better way. Okay students, so till now we have talked a lot on should, right, on the modal should. But now it's the time to practice. But we are basically going to focus on how to use should have in the negative. Because using should in for past Sorry, using should for present and future is quite easy, right? Let's practice little how to use it for past. So for this, I have an activity for you. I have an activity for you. So keep that in mind, please. One means should have and two means should not have, okay? So when I'm writing here, one means you have to form a sentence in positive sense. When I'm writing two means you have to form a sentence in negative sense, okay? Basically, what I want you to do is you have to make a change in the verb form. So, if I use I should have, what should be here? That's what I want you all to do. So, I hope you all are carrying your notebook or something where you can write and practice this activity. So, let's start. So, first sentence is I should have rehearsed my speech. Mm -hmm. I should have. So, it is past. So, I should have rehearsed my speech. Absolutely correct. So there are some past forms where we just add D or ED and we make it into past. Let's move to next one and let's see what is different here. We should have buy a car. Mm -hmm. It's incorrect. So it should be we should have bought a car. So let's make correction here. It should be bought. B-O-U-G-H-T. Because we are using have before. Absolutely. Moving on to the next one. You should not have talked impolitely. You should not have talked impolitely. Correct. Moving on to the next one. I hope you all are able to understand this. If not, you can mention your doubts in the comment section. I will definitely reply to all of you and clear your doubts for the topic. Moving on with the next one. They should not go for party yesterday incorrect they should not have gone for party yesterday right second form of go is sorry third form of go is gone that's why have gone 
correct. Rita should have guide her peers to complete tasks. Okay, so should it be guide or guided? Absolutely correct. It should be guided. I should not have fight with my friends. Incorrect once again. So it should not be fight. It should be. It should be fought. I should not have fought with my friends. Now here, I want to tell you that there is a difference between adding ed and writing what. These are regular, regular verb forms and irregular verb forms. Okay, so if you want to understand about them accurately, Watch my video related to that, which is on regular verb forms and irregular verb forms, and clear your confusion. Thank you, everyone. If you liked my video, please like, comment, and subscribe the channel for the notifications of some other helpful videos and sessions. Thank you, everyone.